Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by our Patreon supporters and CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, and our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, offering the best inventory prices and delivery of cards for Magic Online. I am Evan Irwin, and we get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Aaron Campbell. Hey, everybody. Ruben Bressler. Hello. Hey. What's up? Yo, you, you are closer to the camera this week. That's what's I up. am. I have a, like, a nicer... Uh, camera plugged in right now right. and I scooted my and desk we back like, a little bit like right so now there. I'm like way up in your face mm -hmm. but I like I can be back here if this is better yeah this I wish there was something I could do with my glasses the, the whole thing with is this, this thing is this better uh, back here it's fine it's whatever it's up to you. Been <laughs> well look we kick it off with our first pick and giveaway a $50 gift certificate to coolstuffinc.com is up for grabs exclamation mark raffle in the chat for your chance to win subscribe first even with Bezos Bucks to get two chances to win which has happened many many times if you're listening yes. to our podcast I promise we give these away we just cut it out of the <laughs> podcast so you yeah. don't have to hear that stuff no I have a big pile of of uh of of cool stuff and gift cards, like like Evan has Outback Steakhouse. Gift I cards. roll around Just naked in them. Yeah, I dive in them like Scrooge, like McDuff. Scrooge McDuck. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. got a big pool of them. Exactly. Big, I big. do back like back the, the, wow. the back backstroke. There you back go. Were you looking stroke. for backstroke? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have to look for it. It finds me. But. Mm. The first pick this week is that we have a brand new secret layer. This being Prime Slime. Yeah. Sick of being early game enemies or confined to cubes, these slimes are breaking the mold. Mm -hmm. This is five mm -hmm. cards for uh, 30 bucks, essentially $29.99, which ends up being about 40 bucks after shipping and tax or whatever, so just get over that stuff. Um, but Acidic right. Slime, Scavenging News, Void Slime, which has the best flavor text ever. Uh, the Mimeoplasm and Necrotic Ooze are your five different slimes. They're in a very cool looking art style. I'm bringing it up here on the screen so you guys can check it out. But this to me is like, th this is a no brainer product. If you got 40 bucks, if you have that cash in your hand, buy this stick it in a closet let's talk in 2030 and you'll get your money back and then some because they're only going to print these once they're not going to be printing anything that looks anything like this basically again they're more or less thinking about it think of it sort of like as the expeditions right or the Amonkhet cards like they're not going to reprint these as you see them they might yeah. reprint them in different versions different ways they're kind of making their own sort of reserved printings as it were um, and these things are only going to be sought more and more and as time has told us previously it's really really easy to make your money back and then some to just get some of these throw them in the closet don't think about it and sell them later if you need to or if you don't need to just hold on to them because as magic cards do it generally gets more expensive as time goes on so now i do have to ask where are we with shipping all the previous secret layers like is there still a backlog there there is but they actually created a page which was pretty cool where wizards has and oh man i think i'm not sure if i have it here listed um <clears throat> yeah there's a page here that they made i'm gonna put a link here in the chat and I'll put a link in the show notes so you guys can have it but they actually have a secret layer production and shipping status page that talks about whether something's in pre-production in production preparing fulfillment shipping or shipping completed uh, to show all of that stuff out so the summer super drop stuff is shipping right now the prime slime okay. stuff is in pre-production so that's cool they give you time frames to give you an idea so yeah. yes you're going to have to wait and obviously because everything sucks these days everything kind of takes longer anyway um, but the idea that you know you have these really cool collections yeah of secret layers is awesome and yeah, has become some, a new normal. This is some wild art style. Oh, yeah. Like this is like Rick and Morty stuff. Wizards Wizard of Barge is the artist, Dakota Cates, I'm being told. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, wait, I mean, this is I don't even know where they would have found this guy. This is an LA based like screen printer who moved here like 2 years ago. That's like when I moved here. Like this is a this is a crazy crazy mashup of of worlds. But I love the art style. That flavor text of cyclonic. <laughs> 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 um, is really really just excellent. Oh my That's gonna God. be a gift for the podcast listeners. Just oh yeah, the podcast listeners don't even know what they I just have did. No today. idea what's happening. I want to yeah, see if I can no. finally get this stuff on the screen for you guys to check out because it, it is worth looking at. It just the unique artwork that they have mm -hmm. here is so cool. This thing it is, looks, looks like great. paintings that you see on the wall when you're playing laser tag. You know what this kind of reminds me of a little bit. Have you ever seen that comic? I don't remember the artist's name, but they're known for the oh no. 
Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like, that, they'll that, have like, yep. you know, going to a dance or like going grocery shopping. And then mm-hmm. the end frame is always, oh, no. Like, that's yep. what it kind of reminds me of. Yep, do note that, unfortunately, uh, as much as I would like for you guys to buy one and stay in the closet, the pre-order period has ended, so that's unfortunate. Oh well, I hope you did then. I hope you did. I, I tweet about this but stuff these are cool. every time. And, like, and, and if you can pick them up for cheap, probably that's also a good idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This is one of those that when they do actually ship, if you want these things, get them early. Just like right now, your Double Masters cards. If you like anything in Double Masters, now is the time to get it because they won't be any cheaper than they are right now. If you can find them. I tried shopping right. around the other day and stores were sold out. Yeah, some of it. Uh, there's a, There was a restock we did on Cool Stuff Think. We had a big sale this past weekend because Jeff Hoagland had an event that we had a, a promotion with yep. and stuff for Double mm-hmm. Masters, but it seemed to work out. Um, either way... Again, Wizards is clearly enjoying making these secret layers. Uh, there's yeah, so and the other thing that I've heard is that the collector numbers. That's what I was just about to touch to like, on. Oh, did you go ahead? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Jay Anelli, who is a Magic Gathering author, and he's like literally written books for Wizards uh, about Magic lore Love and him. things. Yeah, he's great. He says, uh, "Oh, good, they're finally finishing the forty-six to fifty collector numbers. <laughs> I can finish my second Flavor Gems article yeah. for forty-one to eighty-two. He checks the cards. The collector number cries as we jump forward another fifty numbers." <laughs> Goodness gracious. So for reference, the secret layers so far went up to number 82, and we're still missing right. collector numbers 46 through 50, so those five cards. Uh, now we're in the 130s, meaning there's another 50 or so cards for future oh, secret layers. That's weird. That's a lot. Why? Why is it doing that? I think American currency is the reason they're doing that. Um, so they keep bringing yeah, these out like, because they make a bunch of money. Enough. Seems but fine. But why did they skip? No, that's not what that's... Oh, because there's they're just, a they, they're, modifier there. They're changing the... Why? Uh, they're changing the order because, you know, it's Wizards, right? They can do whatever they okay. want. Okay, so that we're, we're still expecting 50 through whatever? Yes, just different like, timeline. But later, okay. Right. They're expected to fill in the holes, and even if they don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, sure. it's whatever, right? Um, just a thing. But uh, but I, I love these secret layers. I think they're really cool. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, I mean, I love them. Like, I think they're great. They look pretty. Right. They're great for those designer cubes. They're great for those, you know. Like, none of these cards are going to be like who plays void slime like honestly right these are um, casual you know, cards for the most part you know acidic slime is nice for cubes that's cool but right. the minioplasm sweet and uh, sure and if void slime just gives me that great flavor text then i will yeah. totally take it um, of course ultimately um and, but you know yes am, am i happy with, like the fact that these used to be sort of store-based things not necessarily but also note that the april fool's edition of Secret Lair is shipping soon to stores. It does not yeah. have the Squire. Thank you, Wizards of the right. Coast. They got the yank yep. that thing out of there. So that's, yep. that was that didn't get gross. Um, but it's got like the Storm Crow and stuff in it, and it should be really, really yeah. sweet. Uh, so check that out at your local store. That's great. Um, cool. And yeah, let's move on here to Gather the Townsfolk. Goodness gracious. We have what is an awesome awesome series of magic articles. Mark Rosewater uh, has written the State of Design 2020. We have State of Design going all the way back to 2005. 15 yeah, years! That's <clears> wild. He links to him in the article, too, so you can go back and look at him at any time. Yeah, more than, you know, at this point, more than half of the game's lifespan has a design, you know, State of Design article for its respective year, and mm-hmm. that is incredible. We were talking about this in the pre-show where, you know, Rosewater, Rosewater is just an absolute treasure of not only a game designer but being open and being communicative and yep. explaining why and saying why and liking the things he likes and says the things that kind of disappointed him or, or, or you know did came poorly like they're, you know he's not mm-hmm. going to uh, you know he's not going to drop kick his fellow employees or whatever but he's going to say you right. know what the companion mechanic eh. well let's just take it from the top it's a slow go for it. week go for it so, uh, so he starts off with overall magic design he says highlights a lot of magic was purchased and played yes it was um, he says that magic as a game is thriving, uh, more magic product was purchased than ever before, more magic digital play happened than ever before, um, so he really does start things off on a high note, which is really yeah. cool. He says there was plenty of design innovation, he also says that the new packs were a hit, the booster yes. packs and the collector packs yeah. uh, were a really big hit, um, and then he gets on to the lessons. Hold he on a second, so I want to you know, make a note here. Um, how, like, a lot of magic was purchased and played. Here's an interesting stat that I learned today. For, this is for cool stuff, and obviously different retailers experience different things. But the set boosters versus the draft boosters, right? That's one of the big things that they're doing now yep. for Zendikar. Right. The set boosters are basically your loot boxes, and the draft boxes they want to say are for events. Uh, the set boosters are outselling in pre-sales the draft boosters five to one. 
Wow. Five to one. It's not even close. It's not mm. even a little bit close. That's about. awesome. Because a lot of people were just opening booster packs for the fun right. of opening booster packs. And yeah. they made that better, essentially. They made that whole well, experience better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, not everybody can get, especially nowadays, can get together for a draft. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are just buying them off the shelves at Target or <laughs> just whatever. Just to feel something. <laughs> right. Yeah, basically. I mean, and, it's, and the value of opening a set booster is better than the quote unquote value of opening opening a regular booster pack if you're not playing with the cards immediately. Right, and it's got that swing of the multiple rares and the foil right. in every pack and all that stuff is fantastic. Um, but the collector pack stuff was great and the booster fun stuff was great. I was just, I had to note here that like it is remarkable how well the set boosters are already doing you know, even just in pre-sales, we know nothing about Zendikar Rising more or less at this point. Right, right, right. So as things ramp up, it should get really, really exciting. I'm sorry, Aaron, go ahead. <clears throat> oh, no, it's okay. Um, and then he goes on to the lessons. He starts off by saying, we had balance issues, Oof. Oof. <laughs> which is putting it lightly. Um, obviously, any year where we've had the number of bannings that we've had is not ideal. So that's, you know, we wondered what they were thinking. Um, and he says, all I can really say to this lesson is that we're working hard to correct the issues that led to this year's mistakes. The next point is what really struck a nerve with me as somebody who plays a lot of formats and especially older formats. He says, we need to get better at thinking about the ramifications on all the different formats. For much of Magic's life, R&D would design cards for standard and limited and call it a day. Times have changed. You've got Commander, Pioneer, Best of One Standard, Modern, Heroic, yep. all the other formats being played. We need to adapt to how we design to better reflect this new reality. And, you know, I think that is beautiful because there have been so many cards over the last year that have yeah. radically changed the face of Modern and Legacy and Vintage um, you know, and Pioneer and Historic, you know, in ways I don't think they ever imagined and so them acknowledging that this is the case and that they cannot just tunnel and think of two formats anymore um, is a really really big step and I'm glad that they finally came to that conclusion. Yeah it is a big step because previously it was like well we didn't know what we were doing. Oops we accidentally the whole legacy or whatever mm -hmm. it was. Right. Um, and that and you know it is a big job to try to like look at every draft common every weird rare every you know keyword and and you know everything in between and compare it to the 20,000 cards that have been printed in the history of magic but they're at this point now where it's like all right we've we had to rejigger an entire mechanic of 10 of our big rares of mm -hmm. our multicolor creatures then we also banned a dozen cards in multiple formats mm -hmm. every format has seen massive turnover and we're losing an audience because of some of this ridiculous turnover yeah. so how do we fix it well one of the ways to fix it is that you fix it before it ever leaves the house you make sure that these you do your best mm -hmm. you know you're gonna have felidar uh, it's Felidar Guardian plus Sahili Rise every once in a while where they just sneak through. You're going to have stuff where you're like, oh, we didn't put Scion of Una in our fairies deck. We didn't figure out Ravager or whatever. Or we have our last second fixes to Skull Clamp or to Jace or whatever. You know. You know. It, but some of those can be mitigated. Two things. One, uh, this is... <clears throat> this whole thing about designing cards for standard limited call it a day, man. I was talking to them about this at least ten years ago, where I was explaining, I and it's just like, guys, you can't just say this is like this little this little bubble that you get to work in, and everything else is whatever. Like, and that's kind of like and what now they felt they're like. admitting to it, though. Yeah. And then they kind of admitted to it when they did Modern Horizons, right? They they hired some people in, they go like, hey, we're going to do this for Modern, and then Arkham's Astrolabe shows up or whatever, and it's like mm -hmm. it's just kind of a hot mess. So, I mean, yes, it's great that they can think about all the other formats. I understand that, you know, magic is a, a moving engine of like what, 18,000 plus parts. Like it's going right. to, it's going to take a, a long time to figure out exactly what you want to do with all those formats and how one card may just upend everything. I don't know, man. You get to the point where it's just, it's over complex, right? You're going to have to rely on the millions of players to figure out exactly what interaction you missed. Yeah. I mean, I'm never going to expect, you know, Wizards R&D or whatever they're calling themselves, Project X. Um, sure. You know, League League Seven, Your Weapon X, it, whatever Weapon X, yeah, X twenty three, whatever they're <laughs> calling themselves these days. I don't expect them to find everything, sure. but if they are consciously aware of some stuff, 
if they're consciously thinking, hmm, I wonder how this would play in modern, then they can at least look at it, whereas before they didn't even have that. Right, before it was like, well, we made True Name Nemesis, and like, it's whatever. And you're like, well, it's <laughs> right. not really whatever, because you kind of, <laughs> did you seen this other format? They're like, well, but yeah, but it's a, it's a commander card, am I right? And it's like, no, you got to stop doing that. That's weird yeah. to me. It's yeah. nice that they're acknowledging it. But the other half of this is, why should Wizards do anything different than what they've been True. doing over the past year. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing. It. Because you've even said, I remember we've talked about this on previous shows, where I had assumed that there was some sort of, we were going to see some ramifications of this, and you said that sales are only going up. And so it's yeah. this weird, I hate to use this analogy, but it's almost like an abusive relationship, where you know people on Twitter are like, these formats are trash, and I hate this card, but... Or I hate this practice that they're doing, but yet the secret layers are selling out, yeah. the packs are selling out. Yep. Where's where's you're right though? Like, what incentive do they have? There's to no impetus to stop. No yeah. I'm just saying, like, it's one of those things where it's like, yes, <clears throat> they can ban the things that are too good. Like, okay, that's fine. But at the same time, was it fun to play with the broken stuff while we could? Sure. Did a lot of oh people God. participate in said fun? Hell yeah, they did. Oh, my God. And like, I looked at a deck list the other day, and it was, the, <laughs> like, the blue-green Simic deck mm -hmm. that had, like... Four Once Upon a Time, Main Deck, Veil, mm -hmm. Oko, yeah. and like the Wicked Wolves and the Gil. It was, I looked at it and I was like, how was this ever fair? Yeah, how it was did ridiculous. we ever think that this was okay? It was crazy. And you had multiple cards that, like, you know, Zvi's like, this card's gonna get banned. Like, what, you know, yeah. whatever deck you're playing, if it doesn't have Four Once Upon a Time, what do you do in your life? Right. You know, it's so all that stuff happens. There, I mean, that's a whole cycle of, you know, reaction and articles and, you know, outrage and tweets and posts and Facebook. Books and whatever, but and it again, sales. and like right. Wizards this year is on target to crush their previous years. Up, up, up. I mean, exactly. crush, not even close. Yeah, so, I mean, there isn't a huge impetus to change if you continue to fail forward. Right? I mean, um, sure. or if you're losing an audience that you is so like. We've said it before that, you know, the competitive players are really the minority. You know, oh, we yeah. tend to feel like we're the majority when we're in the thick of it. But the reality is the majority of Magic players are kitchen table players, yeah. are casual players, are commander players. So if the only people that are really upset are the competitive folks, they weren't really buying packs anyway. Right. And and so. Now, <laughs> they must have reached a tipping point with standard. Right at a certain point, it's like, all right, ten cards got changed, ten cards are banned. Sure, we're seeing a decline in standard play. Yeah, but on then, arena. But then twenty twenty happened, right? So, and I can understand that if they saw all less the play, numbers are skewed, right? And we don't know what exactly what they got in there. Um, yeah. Someone noted in the chat, maybe standard doesn't sell anymore. Standard sells, my friend. It sells very, very well. Ikoria was the best spring set of all time. It beat War of the Spark. It beat Dominaria. Like it's. It is real. The fact that it beat Dominaria is wild. Was wild. Mm -hmm. Also, no, back in the couple of years ago in the Dominaria days, there was some amount of talk that Wizards held back some of the product for that quarter to mm. the next quarter because it was doing so well. It was going to create expectations that they were going to have problems with meeting in the future. That's just okay. some talk. I don't know. Birds sing. Who cares? Uh, yeah, I know, right? Birds sing. Birds okay. sing. Uh, and He's then talking like this is a friggin' mafia boss over here. I don't know. I, I mean, know. you know, you hear You hear things. You hear I the stuff. phrase today. Right? Uh, every garbage can has its lid or every garbage has its lid. I've never heard that I, one. I've never heard that one. That's that one pretty either. funny. Okay. It's like every rose has its thorn now. except, you know, garbage. Except for every garbage <laughs> has its lid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, but again, the, the point you're actually going to get to, Aaron, in a second about the year could have been more mechanically cohesive. He's actually said this like multiple times. Mm -hmm. Like multiple say designs. Yeah. And, you know, he says here that you know, they're still adapting to a blockless world. You know, having a year where every set occurs on a different plane and has a unique set of mechanics is a challenge. And they still haven't figured it out yet. So, yeah. you know, kudos to them for admitting it, that they still haven't done that. And I think that only serves to... Um, you know, remind people of how hard it is to design, you know, and how hard it is to do this and that, you know, even though it's taken them multiple years, they still don't have it down pat yet. Yeah. And so, you know, we do like to kind of joke about all the mistakes or things like that, but it, it's a difficult job and I, and I don't envy them for that sometimes. Oh yeah. It's an yeah, incredibly I, tough job. Yeah. It's a very tough job and, and you constantly hear about it is the other thing mm. like from people like us. Um, I miss blocks, I think. 
Um, the fact that you could delve deeper into the keywords and sort of mm-hmm. have different flavors of different keywords doing different things, I miss that, I think. I think Wizards tries their best with the core sets to kind of like throw in that sort of potpourri of like, here's some good stuff that can be in there, here's stuff that would help you with Ravnica, and here's stuff that help you wherever. To kind of like fill those holes, you know? But you yeah. don't really get that feeling of like sort of things are changing in this world. We really spend a lot of time in this world. Right. It feels like we just kind of like touch their rose and we left, and then we touch the yeah, Coria exactly. and we left. And it's like there's it's some like there's no hype anymore. There's no right. there's no pageantry. It's not like you get to theme, you know, the the whole year around something. Right. Like uh, like Dungeons and Dragons does. Dungeons and Dragons has their fall big world release and then their spring supplemental product release, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole year was Avernus, right? Hell and 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 like Hell Machines and Mad Max Fury Road and woo, we, you know, we're we're driving around the desert. It's great for a whole year. But if you pa- if you pare that down to three months, you don't get to explore Ikoria. You don't get to explore Theros again on a level that you got to with Innistrad, that you got to with Theros the first time that you get to with Ravnica. I mean, uh-huh. as Pharmacist Judge and some other Darzlock 67, there's just no real story. Well, yeah, there's also just no story. Like, they've just decided that the narrative was cute or whatever, and maybe you can have a novella, but then... As we'll get to, let's go ahead and keep going here with Throne of Eldraine. Yeah, so Throne of Eldraine, they say the highlights, it was a top-down fairy tale design, which was a hit. The audience enjoyed the softer tone, particularly coming from War of the Spark, which was pretty brutal. Right. Um, yeah. The adventure cards were really popular. Um, in terms of lessons, Oko. <laughs> Um, and they still haven't delved too deep into Oko. Like, we want to hear, like, the dirt, and we just haven't got that yet. Um, yeah. They also say that Adamant was forgetful. It sounds like sure. they were really hoping that Adamant would play well with Devotion, um, and it doesn't look like that has happened or will happen. And right. then they say that Throne Limited was kind of slow. Um, and so those are things they said that yeah. they took away from the Throne experience. The food made sure. Limited last a million years. I mean, yeah. There was a yeah. lot of life gain. And, and a lot of times, Wizards builds in, you know, a lot of life link, a lot of life gain, a lot of incidental life gain, and so so comes into play, gain X life. That's because right. if you make those games last just a little bit longer, you can make your creatures just a little bit better. But when your core, one of the core mechanics of the block is make this thing that gains you three life, and you can do right. it multiple <laughs> times. Oh my and multiple god. multiple cards let you do it. Yeah. I yeah. decked many people when I played that limited oh, format. Yeah. It took I mean, a while. Mono Blue Milieu was like the best deck. So. I decked myself playing that format. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I deck myself playing every format. I, I mean, same. I mean... I, I try to draft as many gay as blessings in Dominaria <laughs> Limited as I can. Every time I've drafted Amonkhet Remastered, I'm down to three cards in my deck because I'm just like pull from tomorrow and mm-hmm. cycling my brains out. So I know it's weird, and I'm sure I'm still in the minority, but I would like them to redesign Oko on digital formats because it's yeah. better than having nothing. No. Sure. We have nothing. We have nothing. Yeah. At least you have Commander. Also, we Adventures in Brawl. Dope. We do play it in Vintage. It's funny. I was playing Vintage yesterday and uh, my friend had Sphinx of the Steel Wind in his sideboard. Oh, and no. people were like, why do you have that in there? And we were trying to come up with reasons and he was like, can't get it with Oko. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. That's Perfect. Right. Can't do it. That's the thing. All right, so, anyway, so about Theros so Beyond stupid. Death. Theros Beyond Death highlights players enjoyed returning to Theros and liked the things that we did bring back. Mm-hmm. Um, they were excited to see many of the favorite gods. They loved seeing Elsbeth again, new takes on old legendary creatures. Um, people also really liked the underworld and escape, myself mm-hmm. included. Yep. Um, and sagas were a big hit. Um, you know, they came back from Dominaria, um, introduced them to Theros, and people really dug that. Um, in terms of lessons, they missed some returning things things. Um, there were some people that wished that more of the gods could be seen. There were some people that wanted to see the rest of the Titans, so they felt mm-hmm. very short-changed in that regard. Yep. Um, and then, of course, the story was underwhelming. You know, they famously you were coming off of the War of, Spar- War of the Spark novel, which was widely reviled, um, you know, and this was a block where the trailer didn't really make sense. Uh, nobody could really piece together what happened from the cards, um, and so the story was really, really lacking, and I feel like this is the block where they needed it. Like, to have Elspeth come back and have no one know why was was really big misfire. I would just say that I think sagas should be evergreen. Sagas should be in every yeah, set. Sagas are great. If Wizards is determined not to give that much of a crap about the story, at least I could say I knew that Elspeth conquered death because you put it on a saga on that a explained card. it in a way that was also mechanical, which was cool. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, literally the story was <clears throat> Elspeth found a door in like like Hell's Garage or something and like just <laughs> slipped out the side and sure. no one knew and that's how she yeah. got out, y'all. Uh, I mean, what? 
Yeah. It's oh, snuck under the fence. Yeah, sure. Like, sure. sure. That's sure. what, that is close enough. That's yeah. how it went. I mean, come on. That was silly. Um, I was trying to find the list of the other Titans, but I can't find it in my book. Oh, were they listed actually as like by name? In the, in the, in the uh, Mythic Odysseys of Theros, they are listed. All I didn't of know the that. Titans. Nice. I'll have to find them. Uh, anyway, this is Moe and Icoria. Ikoria players liked the monster theme. Um, they, you know, had, Magic normally has its share of monsters, but they kind of ramped it up with this set and people took notice. Mm. Uh, players embraced the higher complexity. Um, the players enjoyed the limited gameplay, and players mm. also really, really enjoyed the Godzilla tie-in. Um, the lessons they took away from this was, of course, companions. Uh, Maro goes on to say this wasn't just the biggest mistake of the set, this was the biggest mistake of the year. Sure. Uh, we made something that was so environment-warping, that we had to errata how the mechanic worked. That is a pretty big mistake. Those are his exact words. Um, and so to see him take ownership of that is is pretty wonderful. Uh, confusion over what kind of monster set it was. Um, the tie-in with Godzilla kind of had a double-edged sword where people were expecting almost Eldrazi, like just sort of these Voltron behemoths where right. it was more about mutating, kind of evolving and growing your own monster um, as opposed to them just kind of coming out of you know the ground or wherever the way that they are. Um, and then again, unhappiness about the disconnected the story. There were complaints that what was told on the cards didn't necessarily match what was going on with the book. Um, and I did hear good things about the book, but you got to have those things line up. Otherwise, the people are going to notice. I mean, it's just another one of those things that, like, yes, it's small, but it just says, like, how much they care about different aspects of a set. They just don't care about the story as much these mm-hmm. days. Not even And the Vorthos just feel it. You know, it, it's, you know, the competitive players might complain about a card, but if they want that GP win, they're probably going to suck it up and do it anyways. Mm-hmm. But those Vorthoses, I know I know so many of them that still have not recovered from, like, yeah. the war book, and they, they still feel slighted, and they are not as likely to come back from that as a competitive player will. Yeah. It seems weird to leave the story behind after such a big story hit in War of the Spark. I mean, it was dour, but it really drew people in. But the book was terrible. The book was terrible. Yeah. Was trash. The story was good. The book was terrible. Mm-hmm. The, the book trying to undo a lot of things that we liked and you know look forward to seeing develop and stuff was just ugh. Yeah. awful. Anyway, on to Corset. Yeah, so Corset 2021 uh, highlights players enjoyed the terminology changes. Uh, going from hound to dog was really big. Um, having mill finally become a keyword was something people had been asking for for over a decade. Um, so that was really, really exciting. Lots of good reprints. Grim Tutor, Ugin, Azusa, Solemn, Scooz, Containment Priest. A um, lot of this, a lot of good feedback around that. Uh, players really liked the Planeswalker cycles and frames. Mm-hmm. And shrines were a big hit. Yes. Um, he says the most common request that he gets is to go back to Kamigawa, and he says while that is a tall ask, they were happy to give people at least a slice of Kamigawa um, and give them the shrines, which is really cool. Nice. Um, lessons, issues with Teferi. Um, they said that players were worried that they were in for, you know, more broken Teferis, um, and they said that players also expected more mechanical ties to the face of the set, uh, which didn't really happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird, because you know, it's one thing, like, like they literally kind of sold it. They're like, this corset is Teferi time. Mm-hmm. It is Teferi Central. We're in Teferi Station, and you can pick any Teferi <laughs> train you want to get on. And like, one Teferi, and some, a cycle and a, and card a, and a vertical some, and a vertical yeah. cycle with some cool graphics, and it's like, But a lot of right. the Planeswalkers had a vertical cycle. All of them did. And that's neat and all, but that also means that Teferi wasn't unique in that regard. The four different artworks that are so hard to tell apart it's ridiculous I mean mm-hmm. they couldn't have done a little bit more contrast they could have made a little bit more different or interesting I, I don't know it just felt weird to be like where it's all to fair it's all to fair then we get here and it's like here's your one to fair it's like some to fair it's a little yeah. to fair yeah sometimes anyway go ahead Jumpstart. Um, yeah. Highlights. Players loved the concept, mm-hmm. uh, and players also enjoyed the variety of themes. They said that uh, Doug Beyer and Yanni Skulnik and the design teams went uh, above and beyond to make a potpourri of cool themes, and people yep. loved talking about them. Mm-hmm. Uh, downsides, uh, you can't get any. <laughs> um, because of pandemic issues, the first print run was very small, and the themes yeah. you wanted weren't there. So um, while they did cover a lot of themes, like goblins and witches and things like that, um, there were a lot of themes 
themes that they just couldn't really you know give you and so um, he did say that he would love to hear what themes people wanted so that yeah. when they do go back to jumpstart um, if people want another jumpstart they will try to cover that it sounds to me like there were no downsides from jumpstart if the downsides that they had to come up with were there isn't enough of it and we want you to tell us what other themes you want of it mm-hmm. that's a hundred percent win funniest yeah. part jumpstart of that whole thing is amazing is if we make one bro <laughs> right. are you high <laughs> that product is amazing we sold yeah. out of it almost a million yeah. it's He's crazy oh, yes oh. this is this is a this is like the product that they definitely should be jumpstart 2021 jumpstart 2022 yep. let's do absolutely. this every year you have an absolute this is swath. the new dual decks this yeah. is the new dual absolutely this is a way to play limited without having to play limited this is brilliant i want jumpstart commander i think jumpstart is absolutely freaking brilliant like let's do it the best design the best the best idea in magic in at least a good five years maybe ten years i don't know how long has it been double face cards for example like right. it's seriously this is a home run product when your number one lesson is we just didn't have enough to sell to everybody like oh my god jumpstart's amazing jumpstart's the best thing that's happened this year and it's still not close that's me so that's pretty much all he had to talk about as, uh, you know, Zendikar Rising will kick off his uh, state of design for 2021 great. next year, mm-hmm. which would be great. But, uh, but again, the fact that Rosewater puts these up is fantastic. The fact that they're so introspective is great. Um, and I do think, you know, we can really pull some ideas. And, and yep. as you've seen throughout the years, the way that he kind of writes about stuff and the way that he kind of hints about stuff, like there's more going on under the, under the, you, for know, sure. you know, behind the scenes. And, but he's also trying again, to, to mark that, hey, we're listening. We, we know it. We get it. We understand it. And once yeah. again, we're so blessed mm. to have Mark Rosewater at the mm-hmm. helm. It's yeah. tough to understate how important he he as a person is to the continued growth and success of Magic. It's true. Well, we want to congratulate the guys over at Spelltable. Spelltable.com is a tool to use uh, your webcam or your phone as a webcam in order to play Paper Magic still. Um, and I guess that kind of ties in, Aaron, if you want to talk a little bit about the Command Fest coming this weekend. Yeah, so Command Fest uh, 2020, the second one, is happening this weekend. I will be playing all weekend long using Spelltable. It's going to be two days of fun up from the one day from last time. Uh, there's going to be panels. I'm under the, I, it's my understanding that Gavin's going to be revealing some uh, tidbits about Commander Legends, which people are really excited about. Nice. Um, it's it's going to be a really, really good time. And, and most of us are going to be using Spell Table. Just a really great program that has really uh, allowed people to stay in touch with each other while this is all going on. Um, it just does so much. Like there's pronoun options. You can keep track of commander damage. You can put your name, your commander's name. You can adjust the screens. You can also randomize them to see who goes first. It just does so much. It's just such a comprehensive product um, mm-hmm. and it's stable. You know, you very rarely have any sort of disconnecting issues um, and so I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time on spell table. I'm exhausted just thinking about this weekend. So, Because um, <laughs> I know my dance card's going to be full. So You might um, enjoy yourself too much, Aaron. Be careful. I, I, just, I took Monday off just to recover from Command Fest. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to be at Command Fest, let me know. I'd love to get a game in with everybody and it should yeah. be a really good time. Be sure right. to hydrate and sleep enough <laughs> a lot of hydration of yeah, course yes 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 um all right so we have we move on here to desperate ravings somebody floored their you know their apartment with magic cards it was cool which is really uh-huh. cool which is really, really gorgeous neat. Uh, but yeah. yeah we've seen stores have done it before so it's not yeah. crazy novel but still dismissive. we got i uh, know no no i'm not trying to be dismissive i'm trying to say i want to get to this next topic okay. because i know it's a lot more interesting yeah. i'm just saying tap that mtg i see you and that floor it was, is it was really gorgeous yes yeah. add tap that mtg you rocked it high five i'm not trying to diminish <laughs> your work i'm trying to say i want to talk about this other topic which is you just want to stir the pods Hell yeah, you I want to start the fight. Okay. Okay. All right, Ruben, Let's as we have it. established so. this, as we move to the yeah. red zone. Mm. Well, we don't have to move to the red zone until you establish your position. Right, <laughs> until we establish that you're He's wrong. established his right. position enough, hashtag five kids. Oh, Let me that's tell fair. you. Uh, so Abe Corrigan had played in a yeah. uh, SCG Tour qualifier and was streaming it. Uh, streaming it while clearly hanging out and, you know, making plays essentially collectively with uh, some of his friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, got DQ'd from uh, from the event for outside assistance, uh, which was a thing. Was then upset about it uh, and saying things like he doesn't want to play Magic anymore. And then uh, also it came out that he actually got a refund yeah. for playing in that event, even though he got outside assistance. 
so, um, so, so, uh, even though it may not have said, you know, uh, you can't do See, this. This is why I shouldn't tell Evan what my arguments you are. You should <laughs> say the red zone. This is wrong because there's no way you would play in an event like this in the real world with real paper, which this person has played in the real world events before. Right. Knowing that you cannot play by committee. This is absurd. And the fact that he got upset was ridiculous. And the fact that he I mean, wants to leave, there's the door. Get out. Wow, what is wrong with you? Aggressive. What is wrong first, with first you? First of all, you're not able to do a tournament for money by so, committee. That's insane. Okay. Ruben, do we agree on this? What, which side are you on? I, I, I'm not on his side. Okay, then yeah, we're on okay. the same side. So here's this. the thing. So the thing about Dolls, this is Dolls that it's my understanding that this is not clearly stated anywhere. The difference Correct. between an online event and a paper event is if you go to a GP and you play in any side event, whether it be uh, you know just a little draft or whether it be a commander side event, you know going into it what the REL of that is, whether it's casual or competitive. And so you know how to behave yeah. right away, like just going into that event. The problem with a lot of these online events is it's kind of an unspoken rule. It's not clearly established that this is a casual event, this is a competitive event. It is very subjective because what one person considers to be a serious event, um, some person may not consider it to be that. Like I tend to do a lot of, when I stream, I tend to do leagues with people where I'll bring a friend on the stream and they'll teach me how to play a deck. And in my mind, a league is child's play. You're not going to win any crazy prizes from that. But to somebody who maybe doesn't play competitively or doesn't play very often, they may see that league as a really big deal and they may think that I'm doing something wrong. But mm -hmm. then it falls on to either Magic Online or the organizer to establish that and say, hey, this is casual, this is competitive, this is clearly... I mean, I get it. Like, I think it's silly and I certainly wouldn't have broadcast that I was doing that. Oh, yeah, But no. is it in the rules? Is it in the letter of the law? No. Yes, and it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. There is a it's digital it. infraction procedure guide. Thank you, Pharmacist Judge. It is linked there in the chat i linked it one more time so you guys can I know, see it i i know exactly section 2.2 tournament error times. outside assistance a player that does any of the following seeks private information about their match while the match is in progress solicits acts on or does not report directly receiving play advice from any persons outside the match get yeah, yeah. there's not a rule that says i can't go outside somebody's house who's competing and like wait, film wait, wait, them wait, playing wait, 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 that just means okay. it's not there this is rare. there is a rare there there is a rule here there's a rule it, right it, here. it's there's also a rule that says that you're not allowed to use outside notes but i guarantee to you, you've looked at your deck list in the middle of a game before, and I've also watched streams where people bring up photos of their deck list to see what's left in their sideboard. So this is You're allowed to do that. To this SCG event. Hmm? No, this isn't. A, this this th is the standard. This, bl magic this is the judges first of all. Okay, it's the, the standard. Magic, it's yeah. the standard, but not to the online. Correct. Not to the not the the SCG event did not necessarily use these rule sets okay, because then. the Magic Judge program is nebulous at this point. Um, if if the Star City Games event ha had wanted to have an IPG in place, then they probably should have one linked on their website, God. which they don't have. Okay. All so right. if well, I want to enter in a Star City Games event, what I need to do is go to blogs.magicjudges.com, a website that I probably have never been to if I'm playing in a Star City Games event and figure out what it means or just not stream. Just go home well, and all, not advertise the game. Well, sure. The fact that you're streaming clearly having your friends help you make plays like seriously. But I stream leagues. I mean, like, where do yeah. you draw the line? Like... Sure. I draft with my friends all the time. Right, like I understand, and I and I also understand this is messy. This isn't a black and white issue. I can't right. just say this is the end of all evil, and this is this right. is the end of all. This is the good part. <laughs> it's that there's gray parts here where if you're playing sure. for large cash prizes or an event that leads you to large cash prizes, a they should be clear about this digital infraction guide. B this digital infraction guide exists for those events. So if they didn't use it, that's on the organizer for screwing up. And then yes. lastly, the player can also be aware that these infractions may exist or understand that that. That's sure. bad. That's just it's just bad. No, I, it's not okay think, in a tournament environment. This person who has played in tournaments. Yeah, this person is very stupid. The the <laughs> the the person who did this, this. I'm not going to say the, nice things about you when you try to just like play by committee and think that's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Nice I just it's not going to happen. This per, here's the difference. Evan thinks that they're stupid and wrong. I think that they're stupid and right. I think that by the rule as written. 
I would have, I would not have, uh, uh, I would have been surprised to have been DQ'd from this event. The fact that he got a refund, he should go thank whoever was in charge for that. <laughs> I would have kicked I mean, this yeah. boy so far out the freaking door. Come Jesus. on. This is ridiculous. Get out Evan, of my Evan, event. Go home. Really go play something else. Go play yeah, some Legends of Runeterra. So They'll want you this. over there. Yeah. Just go play That's with your friends and like, your companion group way over there somewhere. This is ridiculous. My thing is, like, I don't feel strongly enough about this to tell you that you're wrong or that I hate you, but, like, I feel boy, like I have got to. got a DQ and a song. refund. Man. <laughs> He should go buy a lottery ticket, because what in the hell is happening when the guy gets a DQ and a refund? As Kamarek is uh, is noting, this is a rules as written versus rules as intended debate, um, which has raged on for everything. Mm -hmm. Right? These are, you know, we had a we had a discussion in our in our sports sub Discord about unwritten rules in baseball. Oh yeah. Right? This is an unwritten rule in magic, again. Um, and it's it's only enforced when there's proof, as any law is only enforced when Boy there's proof. Boy had the gall so to cuss these people out after they gave him a refund for a DQ. <laughs> that boy, I swear to God. In front of God and everybody. In front of God, God and God. everybody. <laughs> and by everybody, what you mean is the Duelist Convocation International Judge oh, Program geez. and mm -hmm. StarCityGames.com uh, Tournament IPG Police. Recording yeah, I mean, for God look, and everybody. Obviously, this is obviously don't do this. This don't is very do this. stupid. What's wrong but with it is nice that we now have a data point to argue in the court of law and the court of public opinion in order to actually get something more stringent written down, right? right. Because it shouldn't be. We shouldn't be having this discussion. Yeah. It should be obvious. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a surprise when it when this is brought up. And furthermore, I want to play magic with my friends. Am I allowed to play magic with my friends? Sure. No? Okay. Depends I will find event, a different right? way to play magic with my friends. Yeah. Right? But if this particular way is going to get me DQ'd from an event, that's a negative cost-benefit analysis for me. Right? As opposed to not knowing the rule, hoping to do it, and then finding out in round four or whatever. So it's a, it's a rude awakening. It's a sad thing to find out in the middle of you streaming. And it was a bad reaction. But I have some sympathy for wanting to try it and do it and provide interesting magic streaming in the first place. Okay. I can't stream with you all anymore, by the way, because it's outside assistance when <laughs> so Evan is the arguing angle, on the opposite side. So now side the angle, of the right, zone. right, right. So now they were just trying to make good content. Okay, okay, bruh. All right, that's where we're going with that. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to have fun playing my c card game. Is that is there a problem here? I mean, you also, trying to have fun or are you trying also, to win cash not for and nothing, prizes? But if the fr exactly, but is the phrase is it is there a defined number or does it just say large? It's can whatever you define the large for me. It's Aaron, whatever the Aaron, Aaron can you define large for me. <laughs> oh my god! We talked about smush tops. That's right. And toppers the other That's week. Right. It's not god. necessary smush anymore. Jesus. Uh, okay. That was, a, that was a productive discussion. <laughs> that was and I'm a glad we had it. A fairly productive discussion, and yeah, for for the sake of all involved, I think we're gonna turn the corner <laughs> to the finisher. Let's go ahead and see if we can pick ourselves a winner. Oh no, we got we got we got five and a half minutes. Thank you, timer. <laughs> so we're going half? back. Hey, I said it wrong. I guess I don't know. Oh, no. Which means we get to back to go. Uh, we thought infinite? we were setting it shorter. We did. I thought I was setting it shorter. Um, and then you said it longer. Yeah, I screwed that up. I mean, um, I've, I've I've made that mistake. I mean, what do you want to What do you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. I thought got an it was interesting that well, Gavin Verhade had a really cool thing called "What Would the Jumpstart Pack Themed Around You Have in It?" Oh, I didn't answer fun. this because it was too obvious. I mean, yeah, it was always, yeah, <laughs> smush, smush topper is happen. That's how that works. That's the first is that Evans the pack would be is five bent, kids. See? Evan the Evans pack. would be kids themed. So like blessed spirits. <laughs> I mean, spectral procession uh, was in mind. Children of Corliss. There you go. Right. <laughs> yeah, spectral procession is a good one. Right. It would be like a white. Green tokens, right? But it has to be monocolored. So I was like, "Well, crap! I can't oh, be white so like, green, so I can't have you know voice of resurgence or whatever." Jumpstart's monocolored. 
No, no, just the yeah. one he said you to you right, know, right, imagine. Right. Those were the rules. Just for your thing. The rules yeah. were it's monocolored, and you right. get the land of your choice, the basic land picture that you mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Sure. And I thought that was kind of neat, so I did one of those, which yeah. was fun. So Evans would be would be all children, mm-hmm. and uh, and getting all your chillins together. Hey yo. Um, I guess mine would be. There's I think only I one card want... in all of Magic that has the word children in the title. Children of Corliss, yeah. Yeah, that's really? it. Really? The well, there's also like. child. There's child, but not children. Only not children. one children. Yeah. Nine I think that mine, <clears throat> mine would be uh, voice-themed. Okay. Like, uh, like uh, voice of all, mm. uh, trumpet blast, mm-hmm. maybe um, like uh, yelling, like a, like a scream of some kind, endless scream, like that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Probably would be red. But it would be like like um, B- battle rattle shaman would be in that one, you know, making noise and making a hullabaloo, screaming kind of fury and, and screaming tormenting shield. voice. That's a great one. Ooh, yeah, there you go. Lots of lots of voices could be in there. And uh, Aaron would be uh, mono black walls because she's all about blocking people. <laughs> right. And her pack would be smushed as That's a true. topper That's in the box. True. Yeah, we talk about that. <laughs> Okay, cool. <clears throat> that was two fantastic uh, minutes of content for you to enjoy. Oh, do we need five more or three more minutes uh, now? Three more minutes is currently underway. Oh, uh, Wizards has done this previously, this thing they do, where they go and they get a domain registration yeah. for something that they haven't talked about yet, but oftentimes ends up true. Okay. Uh, this is where they, they they register something called Time Spiral Remastered. And, oh, that's the perfect remastered. And that is Ooh. some that is some hot fire. I don't know what's going on there. I know I like that. that. You know, it's funny because even thinking about something like a Time Spiral Remastered, at the time, Wizards just couldn't stop going on about how like it was such a, a navel gazy set. It was only for the most you know in entrenched players. Uh, uh, you know, period. It was never for the new players. New players didn't get it, didn't understand it. And now they're like, man, you remember Time Spiral? wasn't time spiral like the coolest thing ever and we're like yeah we kind of loved it at the time and it was weird that you kind of crapped on it for so long about how it just wasn't good for anybody else I just shared a link with you guys did you know that 27 years today Magic debuted at Gen Con 1993 27 yeah there are pictures of the original Alpha Boosters the Gen Con 93 logo um, you know some of the cards the Decay deck uh, the walk into this deck, like this is this is history right here. This is really really great. Yeah. It looks like, wow, yeah. three thousand Alpha starter decks were sold at Gen, Gen Con, Con 1993. 1993. Yeah. And where was this? Where are we looking at? If you look in the Google chat that we use. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't seen that. Nice. There's a link. Yeah. Oh, cool. cool. MTG History is such a cool Twitter account. Yeah. Get on that and follow it immediately uh, because you'll see these things. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll bring it up here on the screen so you guys can see it. Oh, okay. um, but it is uh, it is super cool that uh, he can kind of bring up these sort of news stories. And this is what like news stories look like. This was what our information looked like as we got it back in the day. Mm-hmm. Weird kind of typewritery font stuff <laughs> or whatever. Um, but yeah, so bring it up here. We have uh, Enchanting the Masses or What Wizards Did at Gen Con, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, 3,000 decks. Can you imagine? <sighs> Unbelievable. Alpha boosters. Like, Wow. This was, you know, it just you, you get put you get put into like basically a gold mine for all intents and purposes. You don't know you're in the gold mine. You don't know that right. everything around you is made of pure actual gold. Yeah. But if you were lucky and or smart enough, or you know, crazy or enough could to see predicted the future and was like, "Yep, this is they've they've struck oil here." Mm-hmm. And not just yeah. that, you know, it's like you have to imagine that you're not going to get rid of them immediately, right? You could, you know, the next week or even the next couple of months. Just just turn those boxes over for two or three times what you bought it for, or mm-hmm. you put it in your closet for 20, 25 years and you buy a car with it later, you right. know, or you buy yeah, a I mean, house. There's no for way sake. you would have known that. Right. Yeah. And you wouldn't have. So it's, it's so difficult to know about the world of sort of collectibles. Um, it's getting a little bit more overt these days where wizards is like, here is the expensive collectible thing. <laughs> and you buy this in the $25 pack or whatever. Um, but back in the day, it was a lot less clear as to maybe I should pick up some of that portal three kingdoms because they're only printing it once this one time right, or whatever. Yeah. 
Still yeah, no. There's no no way to predict that. <laughs> All right. So we are officially turning the corner to the finisher. There. It's been a while since we've had a 100% good, positive community building, happy hashtag go viral in the magic mm-hmm. community. And finally, this week we did. Thanks to our mutual appreciations for being full of. Inuai? What's that stuff? <laughs> on we. On we? What the hell is oh on we? Oh my god. What the hell's on we? <laughs> you don't know what on we is? No? Like is that like on Evan Nintendo's on console? Wii in the like like a, what? Like on we. It's like existential <laughs> dread and listlessness. Oh, I can't believe you even gave oh, I can't believe you gave him that word, but Really? It's that like, was just like, cruel and unusual. <laughs> on we. Why don't you give me some quinoa also, while you're at say it? Say it. I was just going to say, you should say it like you're from Tennessee. I, don't know. I got that existential <laughs> on we. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try this again. Okay. Uh, oh, thanks to our mutual appreciation for being full of on we, thinking yep. deep thoughts, and loving rainy day aesthetics. Hashtag MTG Goth Girl Squad took Twitter by the minor keys, so to speak, and many of Magic's most melancholy members made memorable memes commemorating their myriad mouth mournful moments. <laughs> now, here on Magic Mics, we write jokes, not tragedies. So tell me, now that we're in our goth phase, mm-hmm. tell me how you're going to join in the goth squad, Ruben. Hold on, I have to get. Oh my god! Let me. Okay. okay. One moment. Oh I'm my still... god! All right. Hey, <laughs> like, my name's Rain. Oh Jesus! Like how my life feels. <laughs> Not like you would understand. Yeah. Anyway, goth is a, like a way of life, which is why I make sure to white border all my decks because I need all of those extra black borders for my nails and for my soul. <laughs> I, I get it. I'm traumatized. So. Uh, Aaron? Sup, Daylighters? I'm Velvet because I'm smooth but also soft, you know? So, like, I'm all about being hashtag goth or whatever, right? It's a way of life for me. I live my life like I play my decks. I put it straight in the graveyard. Just straight straight to the bottom. <laughs> Smush that topper. All right. Hey, 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 I'm Draven. Draven Irwin. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, for some people, goth is a phase. It's not a phase to me, okay, Mom? So how do I live my life to its fullest goth potential? I put on the Sisters of Mercy, turn on my sepia tone lamps, and just lose to Uro as much as I possibly can. Sepia. Mm-hmm. Sepia tone. <laughs> sepia. Sepia? Did I say sepia? It's sepia. It's, it's sepia. Sepia on we. CP on oh we. You gave me on we, dude. For <laughs> real, dude. It's four. It's five letters. You do this on purpose. Don't it's act like you don't. Five letters, Evan. Five letters. I'll show just, you just, five I guess letters. it like when when, when guess, Carrie asks you what, how you want your sandwich made on what or on we. On we. On we. On we, son. Oh, God Almighty. That is another live episode of Magic Mics. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Ruben. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Thank, thanks, Rain. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> so we move to our final slide. Whew. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, CardHoarder.com, my co-host, Aaron Campbell, and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe, and do everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us online on our Discord, Twitch.tv, and Magic Mics. On Twitter at Magic Mics Cast, our Magic Mics subreddit, and like the Magic Mics page on Facebook. Talk to us privately at Magic Mics Podcast at gmail.com. Follow the audio-only podcast at Magic Mics Podcast at Libsyn.com. Or find us on iTunes, or join us here next week. Same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.